Hi, welcome to Make a Memory Bear. Today, we're going to be making the Chipper Memory Bear pattern. The link to purchase the pattern is in the description box below. If you click on the link, it'll take you over to my Etsy shop where the Chipper Memory Bear pattern and all the other patterns that I offer are available. Let's go over the supplies first. This is a pattern that I'm going to be making with a sewing machine, but you can absolutely do this pattern by hand if you would prefer. In addition to that, you're going to need all the regular stuff. You're going to need some scissors, some matching thread, some pins. I do also recommend a seam ripper, and if you want to add a mouth, embroidery thread and needle. You'll need the equivalent of one yard of fabric, which is about one adult large shirt or about six to eight baby onesies. Now regarding the fabric, let's talk about this because I recommend something that's very sturdy or stiff. That'd be like a dress shirt, corduroy, flannel, maybe even denim. I also like using a combination of fabric, so if you have more than one item of clothing, that can give it a little bit of a patchwork quality to the bear, which makes it super cute. If you are a beginner, I strongly recommend that you use a fabric that is solid or has an abstract pattern, because that's gonna be easy and you won't have to worry about lining up lines or plaids. Also, if your fabric has the same design on the inside and the outside of the fabric, that's a little bit easier than using one that has a clear wrong side and a right side like this um, Hawaiian shirt. So these type of dress shirts are my absolute favorite to make memory bears from just because they have a good structure. But if you're using something that's very stretchy or thin, delicate, old, or it's satiny, I would highly recommend using an iron-on stabilizer that you attach to the back of the fabric so that it gives it some structure and prevents ripping. So as I mentioned, I like using a variety of fabrics just to give my bear a little bit of interest. Today I'll use the Hawaiian shirt for the bulk of the bear, and then I've got this leftover fuzzy fabric from an old project, and I'm going to use this just for the ears of the bear to give it a little pop of interest. Let's get started! Once you purchase the pattern, you print it onto regular computer paper, 8.5 by 11 inches, and then you're going to want to cut out all of the pattern pieces on the solid line. Next, I like to take my fabric and fold it in half so that the right sides are together. Folding the fabric over on itself like this with the right sides together will mean we'll have to make less cuts and we'll speed up this step of the process. You'll notice on every pattern piece it says something like cut two, one reverse, or cut four, two reverse. Essentially, if you have a fabric that is the same pattern on the inside and the outside, this step doesn't really apply to you. Just cut out the number that it says total, like cut two. But if you have a fabric like I do that has a clear front side and right side, what this means is you're gonna be cutting out one this direction, you flip it over the reverse direction and you cut out another one. But uh, what I'm suggesting is that you fold your fabrics together like this with the right side together. And then all you have to do is set it down and cut it out once. And automatically by doing that, you will have one forward and one reverse. So it just saves you a little bit of uh, flipping and reversing the pattern. So first we're going to pin all of the pattern pieces onto our fabric. and it should end up looking something like this. Next, we cut the pattern pieces from the fabric. For all the pattern pieces that say cut four, what I do is I first cut out two, and then I uh, remove the pins, take off the pattern template, and I move it to a fresh spot on the fabric and I cut out two more. If I tried to double this fabric again and try to cut out all four at once, I find that it's a little bit too bulky and my edges aren't as clean. Thank you. 
Once all the pattern pieces have been cut out of the fabric, it's time to sew. We're gonna start with the head. And the head actually has four pieces and two of them are gonna create the front of the head two of them are going to create the back of the head. So go ahead and separate it into the front and the back. With our right sides together, we're first going to sew along seam A. That is the side that does not have a little triangular notch. So go ahead and pin it on that side. That'll make the front of the head. And then we'll sew the other two pieces together with their right sides with the triangle notch. That's seam B. We're going to do that side to make the back of the head. This is what it will look like once you've pinned it. One is gonna be along seam A for the front of the head, one along seam B for the back of the head. We don't need the back of the head right now, so you can set that off to the side. We'll use that in a later step. Sew seam A on the front of the head using a 1 4th inch seam allowance. Next, we're sewing the front of the body. We're gonna start where it says sew here first. That's the long seam that has those double triangle notches. Our right sides of the fabric are together. This one is so easy and straightforward. I just add a couple of quick pins just to hold it steady while I sew that seam. We'll be using a 1 4th inch seam allowance like we do with all of the seams throughout this pattern. Next, we're going to be attaching the front of the body to the head. So you open up the front of the body, and you're going to open up the front of the head. And up at the neck of the body, we're going to be attaching the head, and we're going to attach the head so it's upside down. Uh, the right sides of the fabric are going to be together, and we're going to start by lining up that seam that runs right down the center of both pieces. I like to start there. I like to fold those little flaps of the seam out of the way, and I pin those down flat, and that's where we're going to start. So essentially, the head is upside down. The right sides of this are together. I'm just lining up that neck seam, and I'm putting in some pins to hold it in place and then I'm going to sew just straight across, quick and easy. Next up are the ears. We have four pieces of fabric. We're gonna separate those into two different ears with the right sides of the fabric together. I'm going to put a couple of pins in place, and then I'm going to be sewing only on the curved part of the ear. We'll leave that bottom straight edge unsewn. Next, I'm gonna take a sharp pair of scissors and I'm gonna make several little cuts all around the curved part of the ear, making sure that I don't cut through the seam that I just sewed. And that's gonna help it when I turn this right side out that it's gonna lay much nicer and it's gonna have a more curved shape. And then you turn the ears right side out. I can't believe I did this, but this material that I used for the ears was so fluffy that I didn't even notice that I forgot to add the stuffing to the ears. So I grabbed a super quick clip from a different tutorial. All you do is take a little tiny piece of stuffing, you stick it in there first, and then you attach the ears to the head. So just pretend that my ears have stuffing in it and don't forget it for your bear. Okay, jumping back to our bear with the fuzzy ears. We're ready to attach the ears to the head. At the top of the head, 
we have these triangle notches and we're going to use those as our guide post so that we place the ears in the same spot on both sides of the head. So I like to line my ear up right with the edge of that triangle and then pin it into place on each side. However, these are merely suggestions. So you can place the ears higher up on the head or lower down on the side, whatever your preference. and then just sew straight across. We're going to attach the face next. And what I suggest for this is to grab your pattern piece and fold the bear's face along that seam that we just created so that it's roughly in the shape that it was um, before it was attached. So it's in the same shape as the pattern. And we're gonna use the pattern to find specifically where we need to attach the eyes and the nose. Again, this is just a suggestion, so you can feel free to place it anywhere you like, but if you wanna use the pattern, just grab your seam ripper, and what we're gonna do is actually stab straight through the pattern and both sides of the fabric so that we get the hole in the same spot on both sides of that seam. We're just gonna be making a very tiny little starter hole so that we have a spot to stick the safety eyes into. I like to use eyes that are 15 millimeters and noses that are 20 millimeters, but there are a lot of options on the market, so choose the one that you like. I do the same method to attach the nose by using the pattern to line up where it should be placed. But when you're making the starter hole for the nose, make sure that you don't stick it straight into the seam because that could make your entire face unravel. You'll want your starter hole just right next to the seam. If your bear is for a child or going to be near a child, I would highly recommend the safety eyes and nose, but you could also embroider on a face, or you could consider using buttons, but only if it's gonna be away from children. Now is the time to add any other features to the face that you'd like to add, such as a mouth or eyelashes or whiskers or whatever you'd like on your bear, you can add it now. I'm using six strands of black embroidery floss to add a mouth to mine. Next, we're going to do the arms. We have a total of four arm pattern pieces. So we're gonna separate this into two separate arms. We wanna make sure that our right sides of our fabric are together, and then we're gonna be sewing along this entire perimeter However, we are not going to sew between these two triangle notches because that's going to leave us a stuffing hole so that we can stuff the arms later. So I'm just going to grab a couple of pins to hold this into place and then I'll sew around that perimeter. Just like we did with the ears, we're gonna grab our scissors and we're gonna put several small cuts right around the curved part of the hand. And then we're going to turn the arms right side out. Once you create both arms, turn them right side out, make sure they're flat, and we're going to attach them to the body. The hand is gonna be pointing towards the center seam of the body. We're going to attach the arm right on the side between that triangle notch and the neck of the bear. You just need a couple of pins to hold it in place, and then we're gonna repeat it on the other side. Um, I just wanna stress that it is important that the little hand is pointing towards that center seam. Thank you. 
And now we'll sew the arms into place. The legs are next and they're a lot like the arms where we have four total pieces. We're going to separate them into two distinct legs with the right sides of the fabric together. And for seam A, that's essentially the entire perimeter of the leg. It's this little section right above the first triangle, then we'll skip between the triangles, then we go around the bottom of the foot and all the way up the other side. So go ahead and pin that into place and then we'll get ready to sew the perimeter. And just be sure once you sew around that perimeter to check to make sure that you do have that stuffing hole still open so we can stuff it later. Next we're going to be sewing the dart on the foot. So we're going to pull our fabric apart. And we're going to lay it so that we create a new seam that we're going to be pinning and sewing into place. Once it's pinned, just sew straight across. And once you've sewn the dart, Go ahead and turn your foot right side out to check it out and make sure it looks something like what I've got here. We're ready to attach the legs to the body. So we're going to take our legs and we're going to open them so that the seam runs down the middle of the front where we added that little toe dart and the seam that runs down the back. Those are going to be lined up. And then we're going to take the leg and we're going to flip it upside down and we're going to pin it to the bottom of the body of the bear like this. And I usually uh, place it so that there's maybe half an inch away from the center seam that goes down the center of the body. And I'm just gonna pin that into place with the first leg and then I'll repeat with the other leg.
And if you're happy with the positioning of the legs once you've pinned them, the next step is just to sew them into place. And I'd just like to point out regarding these legs that the legs are straight, but the bottom of the bear is round. So you're going to have these little parts of the leg that kind of stick out. So just follow the uh, shape of the bear body and make it kind of curved. And don't worry about those little extra flaps. Those will get tucked inside the bear anyway. We're ready for the back of the head, so you'll grab those other two pieces of the head that we had placed aside. We're going to pin along seam B this time, which is the one that has the little triangle notch at the top. Next, we're doing the back of the body. So for this piece, we're going to be starting by separating our fabric into two single pieces of fabric. We haven't done this yet, but for this one, we're going to be starting with this seam A, this little dart right here, and we're going to fold our fabric over. So we're folding towards the triangle notches that are on the side of the back. That's going to make our stuffing hole later. So fold it in half towards those triangles and then we're going to place some pins right along seam A. And we're going to repeat that process on the other piece of fabric so that we fold it towards those triangle notches and place some pins. They should look like this, and then we're gonna sew right along that seam A, right here. So now that we've sewn seam A on each single piece of fabric, we're going to place our fabrics together with the right sides touching so that we can pin this in place. We're going to pin it on the side with the triangle notches and with that seam A that we just sewed. And it's important when you line this up that that little seam A is matching on both sides of the fabric and then you'll want to pin it into place. I like to lay those little um, flaps down, the little seams down so that it lies smoothly once I sew it. So I start there and then I'm going to pin along the rest of that side. I will leave a space between the little triangle notches because that will be my stuffing hole for the bear later.
So now that it's pinned, I'm going to sew up here above the stuffing hole and then below the stuffing hole. Nothing in between the two notches though. And now when you open it up, you should have the stuffing hole for the bear right here. And then you should have that uh, one line straight across where we sewed seam A. That's actually going to make a little bum for the bear so it sits up nicely when you're done. Just like we did with the front of the body, we're ready to attach the head to the body again on the back side and so I'm going to place the right sides of the fabric together I'm starting with that center seam again I'm lining that up and then I'm going to put several pins in place to attach the head to the body and then I'll sew it into place Okay, this is a big step. We're going to start by placing the front of the body down on the table. We're going to tuck everything in. Tuck the ears in, the arms, the legs, and then take the back of the body, flip it over so that the right sides of the fabric are touching. I like to start up at the top with that center seam because we do want it to be lined up on the front and the back of the body. So I'll place a couple of pins there to get us started. And then we'll go down to the bottom and repeat that same process with the center seam at the bottom of the bear and place a couple of pins there. Next I like to go to the neck and place a couple of pins right where that neck seam meets up. And I'll do that on both sides. So once I've matched up all those major seams and put a pin in there, then I just go around the entire perimeter of the bear putting a pin every inch or so around the whole thing. Once it's pinned, it should look something like this. And now we're ready to sew. I start again up at the top seam and I'm just gonna go nice and slow. 
I am speeding this up in the video, but I go really slow when I'm doing this. I take my time, I keep rearranging the fabric, making sure that my edges stay aligned the entire time. And I'm just gonna make one full turn around the entire perimeter of the bear. And when we get all the way back up to that top seam, we should be good. Next, we're going to open that stuffing hole in the back of the bear, and we're going to gently pull all the limbs through that hole. And once all the limbs are out, it starts naturally kind of turning right side out, and then you can safely pull the head through. Flip the whole thing right side out. Okay, it's time to stuff our bear. I start by stuffing the head, and I like the head to have a lot of stuffing in it. I want it to be really solid so that it holds its shape and its cute face. But this is your bear, and you can make it as squishy or soft as you want to. After I stuff the head, I move on to the body. This is where I like to make it a little bit more squishy so it's a huggable bear, but totally do it the way you love it. After I've done the head and body, I move on to the arms, and finally I will do the legs. About the arms and legs though, what I do is put a lot of stuffing like at the hands and at the feet, but where the limbs attach to the body, I don't put as much stuffing just because I want them to be able to move easily. And if you fill them totally with stuffing, they're gonna stick straight out from the body and they're not gonna be uh, as movable. Next, I'm gonna use a ladder stitch to close all of my stuffing holes. I'm gonna link a very good tutorial below because I'm not very good at demonstrating this, but I have found some pretty good tutorials that can show you up close how to do this part. I usually sew up the main stuffing hole on the back of the body first, and then I do the arms and then the legs, and once you've sewn all those stuffing holes, you are officially done making your bear. The only thing left to do is accessorize. This is where you can really customize your bear and make it your own. You can add bows or ribbons. You can add flowers. You can add little decals that you iron onto the bear. Anything you want to make it special and unique. If you wanna add a collar to your bear, what I do is take a dress shirt like this I'm going to stand up the collar and all I'm going to do is just cut right here, right up next to that seam. And I'm just going to cut it off. And then I'm gonna measure the collar to see how big it needs to be so that it fits my bear. So I'm just gonna loosely kind of put it around the neck and button it into place. And then I'm gonna be cutting along the back of the collar because I'm gonna make um, 
uh, I'm going to cut it in half and then I'm going to sew it back together. So I want that seam to be in the back where people don't really notice it as much. And all I'm doing is pinching it to where I think I want it to fit right. And I'm going to place a pin in that collar so I know that I'm going to cut in between those two pins. I'm removing all of that and then I'm going to uh, sew it back together. So I take the collar back off and then I've got my two pins that are markers there and I'm going to cut on the inside of those and I'm going to remove that little couple of inches of excess fabric that I don't need. I'm going to remove those pins and I'm going to sew this back together to make a new collar. Okay, so I have messed this up in the past. What I recommend is that you first test to make sure that the button will go into the hole and the parts of the collar that actually touch a person's neck, those pieces have to be touching when you sew this new seam. So make sure that it's going to sit right and then pin um, along that new seam that we're going to create. And once it's pinned, it's just a straight line across. And that's all I do because once you sew that new seam, you can just fold the collar over and it will kind of uh, cover up that rough edge where we cut the collar from the shirt. And once it's pinned in place, you can't even see that raw edge. But this is it folks, you've got a finished memory bear that maybe only took you a couple of hours, but it can last a lifetime and provide somebody with so much comfort and peace. Thank you so, so much for watching.